Terrific. Thank you so much, Glenn. And uh, thank you to all of you for being here today. Um, give me just a second to share my screen and we'll take it away. Fantastic. I'm Sean Fraga. I'm the Mellon Postdoctoral Fellow with the Humanities and a Digital World Program at the University of Southern California. I'm joined today by my colleagues, Christy and Samir. Christy is our iOS developer and an MFA candidate in interactive media and games at USC's Cinema School. And Samir is the assistant director of the Amundsen Lab in USC Libraries. We're here today to tell you about BookSnake, which is an app that we're building for iPhone and iPad that lets you view IIIF compliant materials in augmented reality, as if a digitized item were physically present with you on your real world desk. You might already be familiar with physical book snakes. These are the little weighted fabric tubes that you use in archives to hold down the items that you're working with. And just like those physical book snakes, book snake the app lets you hold down digitized archival material so that you can examine it. Let me show you what that looks like. Here we're using BookSnake to explore a map of Los Angeles held by the Library of Congress. BookSnake lets you anchor a two-dimensional digital image to a flat surface in the real world. You just tap to place, and then you can use your iPhone or iPad as a lens to explore the item, just like you would in an archive reading room by physically moving around it. And as you move, BookSnake maintains the item's relative position and relative size. It keeps the item pinned to where you placed it. In just a minute, Christy will take us through the technical side of BookSnake, how it does what it does under the hood. But I first wanna tell you a little bit about why we're building this and about our goals for the project. Here's another view of BookSnake. Um, I'm a historian, my PhD is in history. And one of the joys of my work is spending time in the archives. The first thing that I ever paged as an undergraduate was a Northern Pacific Railway map in the Beinecke. And the experience of spreading it out and investigating it there in the reading room was electric, it was magical. It was about the material presence of the object, but also the embodied experience that I had as a researcher of being able to move freely over and around this map in order to explore it. Our goal with this project is to extend that model of embodied interaction to digitized archival sources. Augmented reality offers a more intimate interface than a mouse or a trackpad. It's a way of getting closer to digitized sources. As an interface, augmented reality works by leveraging the unique capabilities of mobile devices. AR kit shown at top is Apple's version. Um, and it uses the cameras and gyroscopes and other sensors built into devices um, to understand where they are in physical space and how they're moving. But augmented reality as an interface is only valuable if you have something you want to look at. And this is where IIIF comes in. By linking IIIF to Apple's AR kit, BookSnake opens millions of digitized archival materials to new possibilities for research and teaching. I'll turn things over to Christy to tell us more about how BookSnake works. So whenever you're ready, take it away. Okay, thank you. Um, so everyone can see my slides. Okay, so I'll be going through how our app takes in and processes the IIIF um, manifest. So first we download the JSON manifest from a URL and then we load its contents into the app by parsing the JSON for specific keys and storing the value at those keys in our app. If we find that the value is a URL, then we go ahead and download the data behind that URL and store that data instead. So then the app takes all that data and adds it to AR view, where you'll, the user will be able to see those images and interact with them as if they were 3D objects in real space. So how is this information appearing in AR? Well, first we're using ARKit, um, like Sean mentioned, it's a library from Apple to handle the screen view to AR calculations. And this includes world tracking, ray tracing, 2D touch gestures to 3D transformations, lighting, and so on. The image in AR is taken from the manifest and is mapped as a texture to a 3D play model. Um, the play model also comes from ARKit. And this means that the 2D image will be adjusted so that it appears 3D and will have the same behaviors and physics as a 3D object. The metadata from the manifest is stored in primitive types like strings, floats, and integers. And those primitive types are stored in core data. Core data is also a library native to Apple, 
And this means that the information that we're taking in will be persistent. So if the user exits or refreshes the app, all previously downloaded data will not disappear and remain in the app until the user decides otherwise. Every time a manifest is downloaded, all of its data is, is assigned a unique ID, unique to that manifest. So when the user selects an item in the app, all data associated with the item selected will appear. Um, and also the reason why we're storing all the data as primitive types is so that the data won't be corrupted as we're storing it in the app. We've also based our code on this open source project by Jacob Fisher. Um, the project is linked at this URL below. What this open source project does is that it organizes IIIF manifest information in a way that is easy to understand and is accessible for the app. We have made some changes to better suit our purposes, and those can be found in manifestitem.swift and image.swift. And in manifestitem.swift, our changes are mostly for uh, UI and UX purposes, um, so that the information we're taking in will suit the form format of our app. And in IIIF image, we've added functionality to download images as the base code did not have that before. Oh, okay. So while we were working on this app, we found that there were certain requirements that the IIIF manifest needed to have in order to work. So first, because we're looking for information based on specific keys, if the manifest information is organized differently, let's say the key does not exist, or that the value associated with that key is not what we expect, then the app will not be able to find appropriate information. The manifest must also be located at a secure URL or an, at an API that is accessible for the app. And the size of the manifest can impact the data download speed. This isn't necessarily the size of the JSON file itself, but rather the amount of information in the manifest. So if there is too much information, or if the information is nested under layers of unique keys, then the app will take a long time to go through all the categories in order to find the correct information. So I'll turn it back to Sean. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. Let me uh, share my screen again, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how we see BookSnake fitting into the larger uh, landscape um, and how we imagine it being used. We see BookSnake as staking out a space between web-based IIIF viewing clients and cultural heritage um, projects that are focused on 3D objects in a way that really draws on the strengths of each of them. Web-based viewers, as you all know, are great because they're flexible. They can display anything with a IIIF manifest, and they offer user lots of different ways of interacting with that content. But they're necessarily limited by a user's screen size. Users have to click and drag in order to pan and zoom in order to fit what can be a very large object within the confines of their screen. On the other hand, there are a number of projects working to make 3D data accessible to scholars. These projects demonstrate the potential of AR and VR for new research methods and new kinds of archival interaction. But 3D data aren't yet as easy to access or as widely available as the kinds of uh, digitized archival media available through IIIF. And so users are generally cur uh, limited to curated collections. We see BookSnake as sitting between these, combining the flexibility of IIIF web viewers with the power of augmented reality. Because BookSnake can wrap any IIIF compliant item to an AR canvas, it gives you the same freedom of choice as web-based viewers. And like these 3D projects, BookSnake lets you explore an item as if it's physically there with you. We think BookSnake is gonna be a really useful tool for research and teaching. Researchers can use BookSnake to collect archival sources from across different archives, and teachers can collect primary sources relevant to their classes, so students can explore them in BookSnake. This gives you one place to keep everything with all of the metadata and attributions included in the IIIF manifest preserved intact, so that you can always tell what something is and where it's come from. You can also use BookSnake as a document camera for virtual documents. By mirroring or sharing your device's screen, you can easily guide other people through your interpretation of a given document. You can either do this live or record it and share it later. I said earlier that BookSnake leverages some of the unique technological capabilities of mobile devices. Um, and I also wanna to flag that as, as more and more undergraduates, as more and more students shift towards using mobile devices as their primary devices, our hope is that BookSnake will give them a way to escape the limitations of screen size and to use a technology that they already have accessible to them to directly experience humanistic research. 
So to bring it all together, BookSnake is an app that we're building for iPhone and iPad that lets you view IIIF compliant material in augmented reality. It's an experiment with spatial computing and with how embodied interaction can enrich archival research. And it's a call to think creatively about how the unique capabilities of mobile devices offer new opportunities for humanities computing. We're currently beta testing BookSnake at USC, and we plan to open beta testing to the general public during fall semester. If you'd like to know more, if you're interested in serving as a beta tester, or if you'd like to get involved as a developer or as an archivist, please visit our website, booksnake.app or follow us on Twitter with the handle BookSnake app. We'll be posting a short video demonstrating some of what we showed here um, to that Twitter account later today. So thanks very much for your time and attention. Um, and we'll look forward to answering your questions in the time that we have remaining. Thank you, that was wonderful. Um, so feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions or um, I can read the uh, questions out of the Hoover app uh, if you'd rather do that. Let's start with what we see having the, the Hoover queue. So the first question is, um, regarding BookSnake, does it work with multi-image manifests like manuscripts? And how does it use the physical scale extension to project the object at the correct scale in reality? I love this question. Uh, this points to two of our um, research frontiers at this particular moment. Um, we know that multi-image manifests like manuscripts or, or maps or books are very important to scholars. And uh, we're currently exploring the sort of UI and UX conventions um, that might make sense in order to interact with, with those kinds of materials in augmented reality. Um, so the current version of BookSnake, uh, the beta version that we're working with right now, um, displays single items, um, but we know that multi-image items and uh, recto or verso options um, are important and that's that's something that, that we're working on on building into the app. As for the physical scale, uh, this is also a really important question. Um, IIIF manifests are fantastic for the amount of information they contain, but because they are a framework rather than a standard, uh, different archives have implemented the um, have implemented them differently and include different information in those manifests. Um, so we don't know yet. Um, we're working on, on figuring out how to physically scale the items um, that are downloaded from, from these archives um, to their correct scale in reality. Um, that information is often included in, in the, the catalog records themselves. We're looking into using Mark XML as a, a source for that data, um, but we don't have an answer yet. So if you or anybody else on the call has ideas on, on how we can incorporate that into BookSnake, um, we're all ears, we'd love to hear. Uh, next question is, um, are you planning to make it available on Android? Uh, that's something that we're talking about. It's something pretty far down the development pathway at this point. Uh, we started with Apple and with ARKit because ARKit is um, extremely robust and well supported across the, the Apple mobile devices. Um, and uh, also because of Apple's deep roots in, in education and in making these kinds of things available. Uh, so we're starting with iOS for now. We're a small team, three of the four of us are here on this call. Uh, so Android as a development priority is, is something that's lower down our queue. Great, thank you. Uh, next question, how does your app decide what resolution level of IIIF image to use? This is something that is um, going to depend a little bit on, on which archives we're pulling from, um, especially because, well, no, uh, in order to keep things simple, I'll say that, that at the moment we are um, trying to balance between resolution on the one hand and file size on the other uh, with the Library of Congress, which is one of the, the archives that we've been working closely with at first in order to get their materials into the app. Uh, we found that a good compromise is the 50% the scale of um, the images that they're hosting um, as a general rule. Uh, but this is something that we expect to explore in greater detail as we're able to incorporate uh, dimensional information and um, think about how we might check a resolution of a digitized item uh, in case it will 
in case it might display poorly at its real world size uh, in augmented reality is something that we might want to warn a user about. Great, thanks. And I think uh, Tom Crane's put some links in the chat about um, a physical uh, size extension to Triple F. Um, that's in the Hoover chat. Um, but there's another question from Ronald Haynes. Um, any thoughts about making BookSnake multi-platform, say via Web XR? That's a great question. We're really too early to um, to say. Uh, that's not something that we've started exploring yet. Um, but it's something we'd be very interested in talking more about with you. That's great. And Ronald, do you want to add to that at all? As the the chair of the three D group, one of the chairs of three D group. Thanks. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, thanks so much, Sean. I'm really happy to talk further. That's something we're tracking and experimenting with in uh, the AAAF 3D group. WebXR can do all of this and more. So, Yeah, it would be great to talk further. We've been following uh, the AAAF 3D group sort of at a distance. And uh, as soon as there is an emerging framework for 3D objects, we would love to incorporate those into BookSnake as well. Thank you, too, for the uh, the various badge references earlier. Uh, lots of our related projects. Thanks. Yeah. Are there other questions? Uh, at this point, I'll put some of our links into uh, the chat so that people have these handy um, links to the project website. Uh, to the Twitter account, um, and uh, here's that that video that I promised that'll be posted to the the Twitter account uh, later today. Thank you. That's a really excellent presentation. I was just on a AAAF for research call yesterday, and they were talking about the physicality of books and how difficult it is now with coronavirus to kind of get that physicality of books. So it's yeah, a really timely presentation. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is very much a project that came out of uh, some distress about archives being closed and inaccessible, uh, but we hope that some of the, the principles of embodied interaction uh, will, will uh, remain valuable into the future, even as archives reopen. Great. Okay, so I think if there are no more questions, uh, just thank you to all the presenters. That was really great. Uh, and I'll end the session there if there's no other questions. Terrific. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.